So a little bit about our centre. Uh, the centre has been providing services for over 20 years and um, uh, the centre's vision is that we want all aged care consumers in Australia to experience inclusive and accessible care. Our purpose is to build the capacity and capabilities uh, of Australian aged care providers so they can deliver services that are inclusive and accessible. And our service areas uh, are inclusive practice training and workshops such as this one, capacity building to promote cultural in, uh, inclusion and equity, such as the resources that we have on our website. And we offer diversity advice and consulting to uh, service providers and government bodies. The Centre for Cultural Diversity in Aging is supported by Benetus and funded by the Australian Department of Health uh, and Aged Care through the uh, Partners in Culturally Appropriate Care BGET program. A few uh, statistics from the census, the last census. Um, so there are 420 languages spoken in Australia including eight, uh, sorry, including 183 indigenous languages. And as you can see, this is sourced by SBS. Uh, at the top five languages used at home other than English are Mandarin, Arabic, Vietnamese, Cantonese, and Punjabi. And around 37% of people who are over 65 years are born overseas. Um, then... The 2021 census data collected information from more than 120 religions and faiths. And in the Department of Health and Aging data from 2020, around 28% of people using home care and 20% of people using permanent residential and respite care were from cold backgrounds. Um, and uh, there's also a culturally diverse aged care workforce. Uh, 21% of the total direct uh, care workforce identify uh, as being from called background. Um, and uh, personal care workers uh, account uh, for 91% of all called, called direct care workers. Today's webinar will be presented by our very own Lisa Tribusio. Lisa has 22 years experience in range of sectors, including Assistant Director for Inclusion Strategies uh, at the NDIA, Diversity Advisor for the Hume Whittlesey Primary Care, Partnership uh, Working with Aged Care and Disability Providers, Project Manager for the Victorian Arabic Social Services, and a Researcher at the Institute for Citizenship and Globalization at Deakin University. She has also undertaken cross cultural research in Egypt for the Center for Intercultural Dialogue in Cairo. Lisa is the founder of Lotus Consulting, which aims to assist organizations in developing deep understandings of diverse perspectives and practices. Thank you so much, everyone, for your interest in today's webinar workshop. Um, we have geared it towards beginners. So we're really fortunate today to be able to partner with James Houston um, from BNG, who's the director of BNG. He's going to go through our online portal, our interactive portal, for you to start to think about how you might reflect on um, where you're at in your inclusive service standard journeys. For those of you that have not heard anything about the inclusive service standards, they were developed by the Centre in 2018 and recognised by the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission and the Department of Health and Aged Care as a key resource for aged care providers to embed diversity, equity and inclusion into their core operations. And they are a framework um, because what we are advocating here is not to just have one program when you look at cultural diversity and supporting seniors from diverse backgrounds. We are advocating that a whole organisation needs to have inclusion embedded into all core operations. And that's what the inclusive service standards are here to support you with. Now, when we talk about inclusion, I mean, there's a lot of rhetoric in this space, isn't there? There's a lot of um, words um, and new words for some people, like what does diversity mean? What does inclusion mean? What does equity mean? What does LGBTIQA plus mean? What does cold mean? And I mean, in a recent cold paper um, by the AAG, uh, even uh, that paper, which I looked at, some data collection indicators found that there's not one definition for cold anyway. And so these, these words that we use are things to sort of promote discussion, but also to embed 
within our value system. What we think is an inclusive approach, though, is one that focuses on adapting and improving your services so that they are welcoming, safe and accessible. So the key words here are adaption, adaptation and flexibility um, and also responding to the needs of your diverse communities. So you don't have, you know, obviously systems that are one size fit all. They're robust and changing. In terms of the building blocks for an inclusive approach, we are going to talk today about three key concepts, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm not sure if you've heard of the word equity. I'm sure you have, <laughs> but those, those that haven't, um, it's not the same as equality. Equity is different. Equity is about being able to look at the barriers that people face in our community and how we can put more resources so that they can be at the same, have the same opportunities as everyone else, for example. So it's about fairness and justice. And it's recognising that disadvantage exists and how do we find solutions to these disadvantages and barriers and behaviours. It looks at classism, sexism, individualism, all the isms of the world. They exist for a reason because we do have disadvantage. But it doesn't mean disadvantaging people. It means that we are programming towards an equal playing field. When we talk about diversity, that's obviously everything. <laughs> who we all are and it doesn't really relate to power and privilege it relates to the beautiful things that we are and everything that makes up who we are we've got biodiversity we've got human diversity we have diversity in lifestyle and diversity in culture and this is what's beautiful about the way we work with our clients and our communities but unfortunately we have systems that perhaps don't reflect that diversity have you ever seen in the media, for example, representations of people from the Congo? Um, you've ever seen representations of people from Pakistan? The media itself is a big representation. Do we see diversity other than SBS, for example? Do we see diversity in our service provision? When you go into the waiting rooms, is there different languages, different symbols, being mindful that some symbols may trigger people? So it's all about how do we think deeply and considerately and consciously about this topic. So now we're going to do a poll. We're interested and curious to find out what does diversity mean to you. So we'll give you a moment. There's not a one definition for diversity. It's different for everyone. So we've got things like differences in culture, social background, gender, the celebration of differences as well. So it's not always the victimisation, is it? It's the celebration. What are the strengths that people can bring into the space? Accepting and interacting with everyone, um, you know, from different backgrounds. So it's that acceptance. Is it tolerance? Is it acceptance? Um, including Inclusion, including people from different ethnic backgrounds, religion, gender, and things that make us unique. So it does relate to person-centred care, doesn't it? How do people celebrate their lives? How do people have meaning? What languages do they speak? You know, what's their cultural framework? What's their life experience? It's history of discrimination. How do they view the world? What's their ideology? Um, we've got uniqueness there. We've got um, the richness of, of different cultures that we're all unique in multiple ways and that um, acknowledgement of those differences will need to be acknowledged, supported and celebrated so we all feel a sense of belonging. That's amazing. Um, thank you. Um, trying to go down, scroll down a little bit. Um, mm, embracing people, acknowledging differences. This is wonderful. Thank you, everyone. We'll give you a copy of these results so you can start to think about perhaps embedding these words into your diversity strategies. You know, you've got the statistics which we've given you in out with Biliana gave you in the introduction. Now you've got some key words here you're starting to develop the understanding or further develop, sorry, I'm assuming you, you haven't started the journey. I'm sure you've heard about these words and terms. So how would you incorporate them into your values, into your way that you run things in your organisations? Thank you for participating in that poll. We've kind of created this slide to sort of unpack a little bit more around things like family roles perhaps, um, beliefs around death and dying, beliefs around ageing, Indigenous heritage, you know, um, all these kind of things to consider in person-centred care. And, of course, we all have overlapping identities and experiences. You know, we're not just to, you know, whatever. Like we don't just come from one diversity aspect here. We're looking at these, all these intersecting um, 
diversity characteristics that can lead to disadvantage or advantage. So, for example, if someone's coming from um, a certain cultural background and has limited English language proficiency, lives in a rural area and has a caring role and has a disability, you know, there's more things to consider around their quality of care um, as opposed to someone who maybe um, would just need language supports, but they they can be independent or they can access a service, but they probably just need an interpreter. So it's, it's also about not assuming that everyone is disadvantaged or advantaged. It's about looking at the complexity. And, of course, inclusion means that we, we, we design programs and services that address power, privilege and imbalance and where environments are welcoming and safe and accessible. So when people enter the service, they stay in the service and they feel culturally safe. And that's what our inclusive service standards are about. What we touch upon our um, diversity, uh, aged care diversity framework, which is from the Department of Health, which is now called the Department of Health and Aged Care, but at the time was the Department of Health. And this is the framework uh, in aged care specifically that you can read um, to support your inclusive practice journey. Um, so I encourage you to have a look at that framework to guide your diversity strategies and diversity you know, directions. The special needs groups involved in the strategy are mentioned here. So if you want a program um, for diversity and inclusion, you might want to consider which special needs groups would you like to particularly focus on? Would you like to have an intersectional approach as well? Um, would you like to start with perhaps, okay, we haven't done much with people from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander backgrounds, so maybe we'll focus on, you know, how we might be, you know, thinking about those communities, partnering with those communities, um, reading more about it. Um, maybe we want to focus on people from cold backgrounds, but maybe we want to go a little bit deeper. Maybe we want to have a look at who are the new and emerging communities in our local area. What are some of the languages in our local area? Why do we have such a low rate of coal consumers? How do we collect that data? What data do we collect? Um, do we collect the language they speak? Do we collect um, the cultural background they come from? And if we do, what do we do with that data? Um, how do we respond to it? And if it's really low, because we know that 30% or of, of, so of um, people over 65 come from coal backgrounds, why do we only have 5% in our service? Is that something that we need to think about? Or how do we look at our local community and think what's happening? What are the changing demographics? Or you might want to focus on, I don't know, you might want to focus on mental health and well-being. You're noticing there's a lot of social isolation and people with depression and anxiety. So these are things just to start doing. There's no right or wrong, but the framework gives you uh, some tips in how to address these special needs groups. Now, our inclusive service standards, for those that don't know about them, um, as mentioned before, were developed by the centre, and there's three standards and 16 performance measures, which can help you reflect on where you're at, but also look at some key performance indicators that you might want to achieve over time. And we know that this is not a quick fix. It's actually never-ending, so it is ongoing. Um, some organisations have taken three to five years to develop the diversity inclusion strategy, and um, you might want to start with a little working group to start the conversations. It can be really overwhelming, but this uh, these standards have to sort of support you with your thinking. There's three. The first one is commitment. The second one is developing systems. And the third one is building capability and capacity building of your staff. So we're just going to do a little bit of an overview of them all. So this, the first one looks at how your organisation clearly articulates its commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and how it responds to consumer diversity and embeds inclusive service provision across all of its systems. So how are you showing your commitment? Are you naming it? Are you, are you developing an inclusion statement? Are you incorporating values of diversity, equity, inclusion within your, your own values that you already have? Are you using these words, diversity, equity, inclusion? Are you using... Um, things like, you know, cultural safety. There actually isn't an inclusive language service guide yet, but we're in the process of developing that because there's so many words. Um, so how are you actually um, developing that commitment in your mission statements on your website? Is your board on, bo on board? Do they understand it? Do they understand what's going on in this space? Do they think it's important? The second one is developing systems that support inclusive services. So this is a really, like, it's really complex again, but if you look at our performance measures, it's starting off with data collection. Um, how are you collecting the data? Do you know how many LGBTIQA plus people have disclosed their sexuality in your service and how have you responded to that perhaps? Or 
you know, do you have local demographic data? Um, we can, we, the centre can support you in gathering that through the SBS um, Census Explorer that's just come out or through other data methods and, and the AIHW as well, collecting aged care diversity data. So we can help you with that data. Um, how are you partnering? So how are you reaching out to, say, migrant resource centres or networks like the PCAC Alliance um, at the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing is um, a member of? How are you having these discussions? Simply having the discussions is meeting some of these, um, is meeting the standard as well. And also how are you getting feedback um, from your consumers as well? So how are you asking them, you know, if their culture is important or, you know, some key indicators to gather from your consumers as well? Um, and to keep in mind that not all consumers can fill out a survey, can they? Can, can't access technology, some of them, and they can't read. Um, so how are you considering these barriers? Not all of them, of course, but some of them have literacy um, issues. So how are you reaching out and getting those um, consumer feedback from cold consumers or consumers with diverse characteristics? And standard three is the building the capability of your staff and your organisation to respond to diversity um, and to be and, to look, and looking at inclusion. And this, and this involves a range of different performance measures as well, um, which are things like upon induction, do you have diversity education program um, for your new staff? Do you have a diversity calendar um, of training? Are you linked with the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Aging's webinar series? Are you promoting it across your organisation? Um, do you have like an intranet site where you've got a diversity page where people can read and do some further reading? Do you, the other thing we, we, we speak about is having a calendar of events. So you might want to have a multi-faith calendar or a multicultural calendar and sort of promote that across your organisation. And um, Nikki, I think if you wanted to send the, the link to the multi, multi-faith calendar, which we're going to show you later, which you can sort of put around your staff room as well and say, oh, today is, you know, Chinese New Year or um, today is the... Um, you know, International Day for the Rights of Transgender Peoples um, or whatever you wanted to, you know, to focus on, for example. Um, those significant days can really help people disclose their story. Um, not everyone wants to disclose their story. You've got to understand that people have a history of discrimination, so you can't expect them to disclose their identity upon intake. Um, if you create an inclusive organisation, they might say, oh, well, I've actually had this happen to me. Um, if you wear, like, you know, for example, an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander badge, for example, then already people were like, they've thought about it. And when I used to work um, as a diversity advisor, I worked with Transgender Victoria and um, they said symbols were so important. As soon as they saw the, the transgender fla- uh, um, symbol, which was different to the rainbow symbol, all, all automatically they felt relaxed in their body. So it's really important. The same with aged care signage in different languages or, thanks, Nikki, or, um, you know, multilingual information is really important. Uh, multilingual staff. I'm learning a new language, you know. What, what, you know, we could incorporate that perhaps. Let's learn. Let's all learn, I don't know, whatever the language that's common in your organisation or your staff, Macedonian, you know, whatever whatever is important to you. Be innovative. Be bold. Now I'm going to introduce you to James, who's going to talk about our portal. And what that's going to do is it, everyone that's attended our workshop today has access to our free portal, um, which you can get from our website. And you enter the portal with a username and password, and then you can start to look at all of our resources and start to self-assess and journey with us. Um, so that was developed in 2020, and it's got some um, lots of good resources around um, self-assessment tools, a reading room, tips and templates to support um, inclusive services and invitations for good practice across the sector. Um, in saying that, we do have a good practice tab on our website um, and we've just added some really good stories. So, yeah, it's exciting. So over to James now. Hi, everyone. My name's James Houston from b and and I'm going to give you all a run through the Inclusive Service Standards portal. I just wanted to start off on, on the centre's website just for those on the call who haven't actually set up an account yet. How do they do that? I think um, Nikki just a moment ago popped up the hyperlink in the chat function, which goes straight to uh, the information about the portal. Um, and obviously there's some great resources here in the centre's website, but you'll see here on the homepage, it says inclusive service standards and resources. You can click on that and then come through to the portal. And there's also the search function. If you type in portal up in the top right hand corner of the centre's website, you'll find the portal as well. So if you haven't as yet set up an account, very simply, you can see how do I set up an account? You click on this hyperlink here 
and it will take you to a registration page. And all you need to do, it is a free portal, um, courtesy of the centre. All you need to do is to type in your email address and your organisation name, and then click on the subscribe now button on this registration page. Don't be scared of the fact that it says uh, subscribe. It is a free subscription. So once you have set up your account, and just close a couple of these tabs, you'll have um, access to the portal. And then here we are on the home page here of the portal. In it's very easy to navigate around. There's just these five tabs up the top of the page. We're here on the home page. If we scroll down, uh, there's a brief bit of introductory commentary around the standards themselves and a hyperlink through to the underlying standards. There's also an infographic here, which is a nice summary of how the inclusive service standards link back to the aged care quality standards, where there are quite a lot of references to diversity and inclusion. And of course, you know, that's an important part of the work that everyone's doing here around diversity is ultimately this does all tie back into, you know, your mandatory compliance requirements around the aged care quality standards. There's a brief how to use the portal here PDF guide, which is only about 10 pages long, um, just to explain some different things that you can do in the portal. Um, if you've got any questions at all, you can reach out to the centre. But let's click into the assessment down the bottom of the page here. So we're now clicking into the assessment for the inclusive service standards. And you'll see under the three standards that Lisa was pointing out just a moment ago, we've got a series of performance measures. And for the purposes of today's session, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on three performance measures. So under standard one, we're going to focus on uh, key documents. Um, under standard two, we're going to focus on stakeholder consultation. And under standard three, we're going to focus on providing up-to-date resources for staff. So let's just click into the first module for a moment around key documents. And we have a brief explanation as to what this is about. It's, it's around how your key organisational documents, such as commitment statements, strategic plans and policies, demonstrate a commitment to inclusive service provision. So very simply for this performance measure, we have a simple question in terms of how you feel you're tracking against this performance measure. Um, you know, you can answer yes, in progress or no, and then you can add in any qualitative comments that you might like to add in here. So maybe just for illustrative purposes, we'll say, yes, we think we're doing a pretty good job. And then we can maybe just copy and paste in just quickly some, some sample commentary, for example, around how uh, we demonstrate our commitment to diversity and inclusion through our key documents. We can link in evidence as we go. So we might link in a, you know, our diversity policy and perhaps our strategic plan. As an example, very easy to load up evidence documents into the platform. But importantly, what we want to have a quick look at today is for each of the performance measures, the Centre for Cultural Diversity in Ageing provides a really neat tip sheet. So let's just have a quick look at the tip sheet for performance measure 1.1. And then you can see here, we repeat um, the definition of that performance measure. Sorry, okay. James, are you able to um, make it bigger? So 120 or 130 if possible? Certainly you can, Lisa. There would be a moment. There we go. How's that? All good? Yep, so we read out that performance measure just a moment ago. It's around uh, how your key organisational documents uh, demonstrate your um, commitment to inclusive service provision. So within this tip sheet, we have a series of suggested actions and strategies, which Lisa is going to run through in a moment. And then also at the bottom of the one page tip sheet, we just link back through to the relevant part of the aged care quality standards and now what we want you to do is reflect on which one you think your organisation would like to work on or which one do you think you need for your organisation. As you can see, it's quite balanced, isn't it? But the first one is coming, is, is, is winning because you're looking at actually identifying the special needs groups you want to have a bit of a reflection on. 
That's awesome. And this is for beginners. So it's great that you're starting to think about the age care diversity framework and what do you want to start to, you know, to put your energy into. The second and third one, there are things like putting those values into your organisational pillars um, and your all your documents and policies and mission statements. So starting to look at the values. And when we did that exercise in the beginning, which is what does diversity mean to you, you might want to actually ask that. Um, in your team meetings and start to collect those values and those nuggets, those golden nuggets to put into your mission statements. Thank you, everyone. Um, there are a few people that also looked at, 14 people wanted to look at a diversity equity inclusion strategy. Um, so that's great. And um, we'll go back to James to reflect upon now an action plan for um, standard two. Thank you, James. We're now back in the inclusive service standard self-assessment. So we were just initially having a look at performance measure 1.1 and now, as Lisa said, under standard two, we're going to take a look at stakeholder consultation. So let's open up this module in a separate tab. Here we see a brief explanation that this module is about having processes in place to facilitate consultation with special needs groups. So again, we just get up, asked our simple question as to whether or not we may be addressing that particular performance measure or how we're addressing it. Again, we can answer yes and get a nice green tick, which is great. If we say in progress, this is where we might actually assign a task to a, a colleague who would receive an email notification where we might prompt someone to um, do something in relation to this particular performance measure. So simply assign them the task and type in some notes saying, James, please review our special needs groups annual survey, for example, whatever the item might be, but let's just tick yes for the sake of it. And again, we can type in notes down the bottom, but more importantly, let's go and have a look at the tip sheet that the centre provides. So again, the same structure as the tip sheet that we saw for performance measure 1.1. Um, and then here we have five suggested actions. Again, Lisa, I'll expand that so everyone can see it. And you can see at the bottom, we link through to two underlying sections within the aged care quality standards, which makes intuitive sense that these particular performance or this particular performance measure relates to the feedback and complaints section within the aged care quality standards. So Lisa, would you like to take over again yes. and run through the poll across these five suggested actions and strategies? Thank you, James. So let's go to the poll now and have a look at those five suggested actions for performance measure 2.2. And just to let you know that this is simply an exercise of potential actions you might want to take. And if it's too overwhelming, that's okay. You might just want to start with identifying the special needs groups. Really good stuff here. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, you can continue this reflection in your own time. But as you can see, that it, people want to build those relationships, don't they? Um, and that's really good to know. Does it mean that you feel your organisations haven't looked at these special needs groups and building those relationships? And I know that the centre is, we actually ran a webinar last year on building those mutual and beneficial relationships um, with certain, you know, cold community groups or other organisations that might be able to support your work. Um, the second one coming in there is that you wanted to look at a diversity consultation strategy. So start to think about, okay, if we want to focus on cold communities in our local area, who are we going to consult with this year? Or if we want to focus on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, who are we going to focus on this year, for example? What are our short-term, medium-term and long-term goals in relation to consultation as well? Do we want to join local networks? That's a really good one too. Online or face-to-face, -to -face, get to know people. Um, I remember the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing, we've been doing everything online, but we started to do face-to-face -face and we went to a Victorian multicultural um, launch of um, their COVID-19 cold strategy and we met so many people and we, just, we were able to engage with the Afghan community, we were able to engage um, with the Indian communities, and it was just amazing. So that face-to-face -face engagement and really just being in a space of talking was really great. Over to you, James. So let's move away from performance measure 2.2 .2 
and then come back down to performance measure 3.2, which is around up-to-date resources for staff. So again, brief explanation as to what's about. It's around training information tools, resources for staff to effectively respond to the diverse needs of consumers. We don't need to go through the specific questions as to how you might be rating your organisation. Let's jump straight through to the tip sheet. And then here we can see there's a few more su suggested actions in this case. And this, again, it makes sense that this particular performance measure aligns with standard seven, the HR standard in the aged care quality standards. So let's just expand our page here so people can read those suggested actions. And maybe I'll hand over to you again, Lisa. Thank you so much, James. So over to the third poll, which is what your action may be in relation to performance measure 3.2. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your contributions, everyone. As you can see, um, people want to develop a learning and training strategy. The centre can support you with that. Um, come to us. We can give you some topics. Um, there is a tip sheet around some key topics um, that you might want to, to consider. So that's in our portal and on our website of some key training topics like cultural safety, dealing with uh, people from who have experienced trauma, um, we've got things like um, understanding the refugee experience, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different topics there. And the second one was that you've developed a training calendar. So you want to have a look at a strategy and then develop your training um, calendar. Amazing. Let us know how you go with that and if you need any support. Thank you so much for that little reflection exercise, everyone. I'm going to pass it over now to our very own Nikki, who's going to um, let you know where to go for further support. Now, we have a number of um, resources on our website, and I start with our inclusive service centers and resources that we mentioned in our webinar today. They're basically divided up in six different um, areas that we can provide you with the results. We have the inclusive service centers online portal that we um, explained very um, in detail. We have our tip sheets, templates, and resources. You can actually read the Inclusive Service Standards document. We have video and discussion guides. We have online training modules. And we also have um, our organization audit and planning to It's a really great resource for you to sort of check where you're going with that. And next um, is our diversity mentoring program, which we just recently started. And it's a co-design program involving a collaboration between HK organization and the Center for Culture and Diversity in Aging. Um, it's already very popular. Um, the program links leaders from the HK service to diversity mentors from the Center for Culture, Diversity and Aging in a six month mentoring relationship. And we have a great um, person new on board. His name is Georg and he is um, our diversity coach. The aim of the program is to support um, the HK leaders within the service to develop the initial stage of a diversity and inclusion approach across the whole of organization. And this includes monthly diversity consultations and two online training sessions and culture appropriate care delivered to leaders and also direct care staff. You, you find a link there, or you can also Google it, diversity mentoring program. And we because we have quite a bit of demand at the moment, um, it's first come first serve. We might have to see how we triage it if we get too much um, interest in it. Also in terms of our diversity webinars, um, so we have two more coming up um, for this um, year. So it's 10 steps to developing diversity plan in October. And in November, we have supporting all that people from catching diversity diverse backgrounds with the hearing impairment. It's sort of a very interesting topic. So you can see all the topics we have for this financial year. So we encourage you to, to go to our training um, page under the, under 2022, 22, 2023. And um sign up for the for the upcoming training sessions and we would love to have you there as well and also our um, survey we have developed a survey which you can um, access on our website where we are gathering voices and feedback from the aged care sector across australia to improve the aged care system for seniors and culture and university level backgrounds we already got a few people who or filled in the service. So very grateful of you already provided feedback, and we encourage you um, to um, to you know to also fill in the survey so we can feed that up to the um, federal um, Department of Health and Aged Care. 
Now, we are very proud and very happy that we were able to co-design a model together with the HK Quality and Safety Commission. Uh, everybody's a story, the Villain Culture Inclusive Care, which was developed as a partnership project with the commission at this, the commission and us. And you can access it on our um on our webpage as this, as you see this link. Um, you can also um register directly through the um Alice platform if you have a, if you already um have a Alice um platform um access. You can also go directly to the H Quality and Safety Commission and I access that um, training module. Okay, now we're very proud that we were able to have a uh, have a podcast series that Biliana um, managed and organized. We have a great speakers um, we have we already interviewed, and it's the podcast series is called One Size Does Not Fit All, and they're really beautiful podcasts. I can only encourage you to go to that web link and listen to them on either Spotify or Google or Apple and listen to the um, great um, recordings. Now, this is also another project we have been quite involved with the um, Department of Health and Aged Care. So at the moment, all aged care providers which are funded or subsidized by the Australian government, they can get any of their resources, which are not marketing materials, for example, and which directly benefit seniors from cult backgrounds, they can get their information translated, whether it's, you know, resources or information that's good for, you know, seniors to know. You can um, send your request to diversityhk at icon8.com.au and you can get your um, information translated. We have, for example, communication cards, uh, phrases getting translated. If you want to co-design something, that's fine. If it's audio files, Whatever it is, whatever helps uh, seniors from cold backgrounds to access your services, um, you can make really use of that project. It's a really great project, and it's, it really came out of the World Commission recommendations. So we are part of the Partners in Culture Appropriate Care Program. We are the Victorian provider, but there's a, um, a PCAC provider in each state and territory. And as part of the alliance, we aim to be a voice and discussion conduit into information training and resource to inform age and community services across Australia. And the PICAG Alliance website is there also for your information. 